Yeah. Glory to God. It's, you know, every day you talk with Jesus. Mm. And I'm talking with Jesus. Yeah, good song. Great song. It's a good reminder. Like, you know, he's your friend. He's your, he's not only, he's not only God, he's your friend, he's your brother, you know? Yeah. Cultivate that relationship with him. Well, that's what I love about this journey is we get to wake up, read the word and build a, a, a stronger relationship with Jesus. Yeah. You know, amen. Every single day, build, 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 you know, and, and that's, that's a blessing of its own to be able to do that. You know, we get to, we get to have Jesus. That's right. At any second of the day, all day, 24 seven, you know, we no longer have to go to the tabernacle or, you know, all that good stuff. Yeah. Oh, personal friendship, personal relationship. Yeah, we don't have to go through another man, another priest. We can go straight to the source. Boy, that's good. Anyone who calls in the name of the Lord can do that. Anyone. Well, amen to that. Yeah. Chapter 14, grab your Bibles, come on in. Uh, ESV. <sighs> That's what we're reading out of here. Yeah. ESV, so Luke 14. Israel Countdown, a.k.a. Field Trip. 137. 300 pounds. Oh, oh, sure is. You know it. Ding, ding, ding. One, right in high. 137 days. Hello, class. <laughs> I love it. 300, uh, 300 pounds. Yeah, 300 pounds. 137 kilos until we all get together and we read the last chapter of the Bible. Yeah. How exciting is that? Live. Live here. Live in, in Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then lap two begins. Yeah, that's right. Lap two, in the beginning was the word. was Jesus. Ah, I can't wait. I'm excited. That God created the heavens and the earth. How you, about how, go ahead? You didn't need the tabernacle, Brian, to go to have a close relationship with God, by the way. I want to take that comment back that I made about three minutes ago. Yeah. Talk to us. No, I'm just saying. I just I guess in my head I was thinking that um You know, the fact that now Christ can live with inside us is such a amazing thing. And we have we just be saved by the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. It really is. And that that's a powerful blessing that we have in this in this church era, this middle time. And I just feel like we just need to be very grateful for that, you know? Mm -hmm. But I feel like you get to be grateful from Genesis 1-1 to now. I mean, it's building a relationship with God is just, ev it's everything. It truly is. It's everything. That should be your number one goal as to how, not how much weight can I lift, not how much money can I make, not how many Instagram followers I can have. Mm. But how can I build the closest relationship possible to Jesus Christ? That's that's pretty good. That's the mission. Yeah, that's pretty good. And then because of that, you'll spread the word. You'll save souls. And you'll preach on top of a mountain. And you'll love your neighbor and all of the above. That's the best thing about Christ is the stronger the relationship, the more the work. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's what I love about doing this. Lap one, lap two, lap three. Until one of us dies. That's it, man. That's it. Every day. You know, look, and, and there are going to be days where we have, you know, we're busy. But still to cultivate that time. You know, that's really what it's about. It's that time. That honor. Respect. He's the king of kings.
Yeah, that's a good point, John. Well said. Well said. Well, I'll pray it in. Please, yeah, pray it in. Let's get started. Uh, Jesus, I just wanted to take this time this morning and pray over Scott Schuster and his wife, Kara. Yeah. Um, they're going through a really tough time right now. And I just know that you have it under control and you have a plan. I pray for peace for both of them and for courage and strength that they will have their little baby one day. And I just want to pray for for both of both Scott and Kara. We love them dearly. And I know you do way more than I do. The love you have for us, Jesus, is beyond comprehension. Mm-hmm. Um, I pray for everyone to have a great day, be safe, walk the narrow path, keep the sword sharp as we dance for you, Lord, with all our might, all day, every day, as we not only read your word, but we do your word. We love you so much. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Gosh, that's great. That's exactly... <laughs> Glory to God. That's beautiful. Oh, thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. I'm just in the best mood ever. I Good. Just, I'm so excited. I'm just... I have so much emotion in my in my soul. I'm I'm happy. I'm ready for the day. I can't tell you how, I, I, how just excited I am to read Luke 14. I yeah. told you... I promise you, I'm not just saying this. The Lord is my witness. I was in bed last night before bed, right before we fell asleep. And I said, I am so excited to wake up in the morning and read Luke 14. Look, I, I John called me. I Oh, you're right. I did call you. Super excited. I did call you. You know, about whatever, 9 o'clock or something. It was late. Yeah. And he was like, you ready? You ready? And I'm like, let's go. I'm ready. 5 a.m. The cloud's moving. You know, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm walking with it. This is not a box being checked, and and I hope I motivate other people here. Like the minute we're done with this study, I'm already counting down for the next study. Yeah, even though it's so early, it's like we get done at like six ten. I'm like, all right, can't wait for tomorrow morning. Yeah, you know, because yeah. we're walking with Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. the, the song they were just listening to is called "Talking to Jesus." It's a beautiful song. Would save my but life. That's what we're doing. So, amen. All right. Yeah. Let's start. Uh, Luke chapter number 14. Here we go. Yeah. I love it. Walking and talking with Jesus. One Sabbath. He went to dine at the house of the ruler of the Pharisees. They were watching him carefully, and behold, there was a man before him who had a droopsy. Mm, what's that? Droopsy. Dropsy? Yeah, let's look. It was uh, swelling and symptoms of heart failure. Oh, man, that's horrible. Yeah. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees saying, it is, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? Sim similar to last chapter. And they took, but they remained silent. Like, wouldn't you want someone healed any time? Did he, well, didn't he? You're, they're getting a first class Harvard degree front row seat. Jesus is teaching him. He's asking him a question. Boy, isn't that true? Let's go over the Bible here. Let's go over Genesis one one to to now. It's true. It's lawful. Like, I would raise my hand and say, "Of course it's not. Or of course it's lawful." Yeah. Saving a soul and healing somebody is far from work. That should be twenty four seven. Nowhere in the Bible says you can't do that. The one that you wrote, Jesus. Yes, I've read it a million times. Me and Brian Nitro on lap five at this point. Please, thumbs up to heal him. Amen. But I guess the words of man, or I guess the religion of man can interfere with that. Yeah. Yeah. 
it's 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 funny how that happens, you know. That how other people see you, you know. We we sometimes we let that take over. Mm-hmm. Verse four, but when but they remained silent. Then he took him, and healed him, and sent him away. Amen. Glory to God. Is that the is that the best line in the Bible? Yeah. Luke fourteen four. He took him and healed him, and sent him away. Can we just celebrate that for the, yeah. for the next two weeks? <laughs> yeah. And have a big festival and get together and drink a glass of wine and eat bread and dance. Or some cold milk or cold honey. Milk. There you go. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah. Ooh, that sounds good. I think sometimes we read over lines like this. Yeah. And just continue moving. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they took him and healed him and sent him away. Like that's amazing. Like you're right. That guy, this guy had heart problems. He was about, he was dying. I think not anymore. Put yourself mentally there, like you know, with the time machine. Because if you actually witness this in person, it would hit you way harder than just. Oh yeah. Having your pastor read it quickly and then five minutes later go over just kind of a general topic. For what he writes, and then you just move on. Well, that's why it's important to, you know, the Bible says that we should meditate on the Word of God, not just read it. Oh, it does. It says meditate. Seven, Joshua chapter one. Oh, meditate day and night. Keep it before your eyes. So now, that's what we're doing. We're thinking about it. Like he healed this guy's heart problem. He healed this guy's, you know, internal organs. Yeah. Wow! Wow! On a sun, on a Saturday, on a, on the Sabbath day, mm. the day of rest, you know, which is you know any other day, and it's an amazing thing. You're right. Let's celebrate this, and that's exactly right. Not just oh, well, he healed somebody. It's not. It's not a common thing. Mm. Of course, it was common to Jesus to believe and have faith, you know. But nowadays, people, you know, people are scared to believe. Mm-hmm. Similar to these Pharisees, you know, scared to believe. Look, ah, if you if if they could lay hands on someone and heal them at any time, you think they'd do it all the time? Of course they would. Got to believe. Got to believe. Verse five, and he said to them, "Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a on a Sabbath day?" will not immediately pull him out. Wow. Right. Yeah, and, and I love how Jesus says, or an ox. Uh, it, it, it's interesting, because it's because what happens if somebody didn't have a son or a daughter? Right. But they're like, I love my animal, my dog, my cat at home. You know, in this time, probably more common was an ox. You well, know. Yeah, yeah. Well, in the King James, it actually says a donkey. Which of you shall have an ass or a, an ox? A donkey, you know. It's the yeah. old word for, for donkey. Or, you know, and they wrote son in, in the ESV. Either way, he gives you multiple options here. Well, it's very interesting, too, again, that Jesus is talking about saving an animal on the set, too. Yeah. If an animal... If a donkey, if an ox, if a dog falls in and needs help, oh no, stuck in a ditch or, you know, like, uh, what's that one movie? Um, the classic 90s movie where there's the cat, the two dogs, and at the end, the golden retriever comes over the mountain and runs to the kid. Oh. Homeward bound. Homeward bound. I'm still thinking of the horse that's tr- stuck in the mud. Yeah, Trey, you shadow isn't his name? Shadow, shadow, shadow is in that, uh, fell through that uh, w- wood in the ditch. Homeward, yeah, yeah. So you just think about that scene and homeward bound at the end, and Jesus just saying, Come on, let yeah, me, let me save you. He's gonna do the same with humans, and he wants to, he wants to save everybody because he loves his creation he loves humans and animals that he created he does 
Let's not forget oh. that. It's not just an ox to Jesus. Nope. Not just a man with a heart issue. These are Jesus's creation. That's exactly right. These are living beings. Mm. Yeah, not just a, some old whatever, you know. Whatever, whatever. It's not that. Not at all. He loves. God loves animals, people, your neighbor. Yeah. You know, yeah. all of us. Amen. Verse yeah. six. Yeah. And after he said this, right, he is verse six. And they could not reply to these things. Yeah, of course they couldn't. Mm. Seven. Now he told a parable to those who were invited. When he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And, and he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with, with shame to take the lowest place. Okay, so you're in a you're at a wedding. You're sitting in you're sitting in the front row, right? Then then someone comes to you and says, "Oh, I need you to sit back here. This is for somebody else." Right. So that's where we're at. Verse yeah. nine. And he and he and he who invited you both will come and say, "Give your place to this person," and then you will begin with shame to take your lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes. He may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. Oh, and here, so here it is. Verse 11, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who ex humbles himself will be exalted. Oh, to love that. Isn't that good? And I remember he's talking to the Pharisees and the leaders. And he said, if you humble yourself, God will exalt you. But yes. if you exalt yourself, you build yourself up, you will be humbled. Gosh, what a great imagery here. Great. Uh, Isn't it? Ah, uh, so, so great. So well, so well said, obviously. Yeah, it's true. It, 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 definitely true. See it in your head. You can see it in your head. Yeah, you can. As it like a movie. Yeah, that's great. The greatest storyteller of all time, Jesus. Amen. Uh, verse 12. Yeah, go for it. You want to? Oh, yeah. He said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All those uh, big fancy dinners and events that we've put on, Brian, and been a part of, and through weightlifting and everything. And we didn't we didn't invite the uh, homeless guy on the corner to it. Yeah, you know, give give without give without trying to get something back from another person. Mm -hmm. That's okay. I mean, just because you didn't invite the homeless. I think the message here isn't just, I mean, it's not necessarily the type of people. It's more like, you know, this whole, this right so far, this whole message at the house here that he's, he's talking to the, the Pharisees, you know, don't, don't try to bribe. Don't try to, don't try to manipulate people. Just do it out of love, you know, mm. and, and, and don't just do it to the rich, you know, cause they have money or the leaders because they're leaders. But give give to the poor. Give to those who can't pay you back or can't do it for you. Just do it. Just love people. I think sometimes we and hey Stuart, Stuart Young, good morning. Good look at this. Stuart's with us. Morning, sir. Morning. 
sometimes, Brian, we do things because we want return. Oh, yeah. You know, and like you just said, you know, talking about what Jesus said is do it because you love your neighbor. You love people. You want to help. You want to be a light. You want to save souls. Stop doing it in return. Yeah. You know, I think you're right. And that's a tricky thing sometimes, you know, because, you know, we have trade for work and we yep. want to provide for our families or we want benefits and comfort in life, et cetera. But I think this is something to chew on throughout the day and like really kind of remind yourself. It's, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Let's see. 15. When one of your, um, when one of those who reclined at table with him heard these things, he said to him, blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. There you go. Yeah. I love bread. Yeah. The good stuff. Yes. But he said to him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field and I must go and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. Verse 20. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. Mm. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the poor and crippled and blind, uh, I'm sorry, then the, um, the servant reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city and bring in the poor and crippled and, and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done. And still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges and compel people to come in that my house may be filled. Mm -hmm. Oh, you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. Yeah, look, I mean, don't let's I, I I never want to refuse the invitation of the Lord. But there are people, John, who continually do. You know? <sighs> like they continually do. Like the most important thing you could do in life. I don't know. Talk to I, maybe I would actually say, no, I'm going to stand on this one. The most important thing you could do in life mm -hmm. is read the Bible. Well, that's true. That is true. It's true because everything comes from it. Mm -hmm. What about being a better husband, John? There you go. What about being a better father, John? There you go. Amen. What about preaching the word and saving souls? Isn't that more important than reading the Bible? Well, yeah, but reading the Bible will be the fruit of that. So it all roots and stems from reading the word. And Brian, to pin back on your point when you said people always have excuses, I can't tell you how many people I know that say they don't have time to read the Bible. Busy schedule. I know. You know? Every day. Often, but I just really, I have my, my little app that gives me the verse of the day. You know, I get my little verses through my phone. Great. But can you take time with the Lord to actually read in full the context of God's word written to you? I mean, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. He died for us, John. He, he came and was beaten, gave his life. And then he wrote a book this whole time, gave us his word. The power of the Holy Ghost. You know, and all he says is do is put the word in your eyes, read it, study it, love me, because I want to give you everything. 
Gosh, you're, you're so true. You're so true. What you said about reading the Word of God, everything comes from the Word of God. Yeah, it, can I ask you a question that I hear a lot? Yeah. That I don't know what it is, but I hear it constantly. And maybe I should have looked it up myself, but I'll ask you. I don't read, I people always tell me, I do devotionals. Oh, you read the Bible cover to cover with Brian Knight? Oh, you guys read God's Word in the morning? Oh, that's great, great. I do my devotionals in, at lunchtime. Uh -huh. What in the world is a devotional? <laughs> what are they reading? What Am I missing something? Should I be doing this as well? Well, a what a devotional is generally. Okay, please help me. Yeah, is... Uh... Let's just say, for example, let's just say somebody says, I have a 30 day devotional. Okay. Right. So um, it's like a small sermon or a message or similar to like a podcast. Every day, someone opens up page one. And a lot of times they'll start off with a scripture or two. The really good ones are like full of the scriptures full of the Bible, but it'll st it'll be like, you know, um, guard your heart for out of your heart, Proverbs chapter four, guard your heart for out of it flows the, the, the issues of life. Right. So it'll, it'll give you a scripture, maybe two or three or whatever. And then it'll, it'll generally, it'll give you a couple paragraphs of like, have you ever been going through the day? Right. And you've had someone come up to you and make you angry or stop you and 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 uh it changes you know your life that day instead of instead of being full of happiness and joy or you watch you know scary movies and just gives you the principles and talks oh. about the principles of the of the scripture of the day oh that sounds good they're not bad that's great so some of them are really great some of them are not are really bad so that's what a devotional is. It's reading the, it's reading a couple scriptures, one scripture or twenty, and then and then generally it's talk. You read about you 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 get a little a small message about about the, the Bible of the day. Okay. So that's a devotional. I see. I guess my thing in that, which it sounds like it's ninety percent human words and a little bit of God's word, right? Like a line or two. That's, that's right. Which is great. Which is awesome. But that needs to be put on. Maybe flip it. Top. That needs to be put on top of reading a chapter a day. Hey, man. You... That's all I'm saying. It's no, not, let's absolutely. get him. Stop making excuses. Make time. And trust me, I'm coming up myself at times. I'm coming up my own family. I've been trying to do a Bible study with my dad. I'm too busy. I've been trying to do a Bible study with my mom. Yep. She, you know, she's just constantly like, oh, I'm just too busy or I don't have time or I'm tired tonight. I'm like, ah. You know, yep. uh, it can get frustrating when you want somebody to read God's word. Oh, I know. Um, I do you know. know what it is for them. Absolutely. You know and, and there's just excuse after excuse. But at my point is, like, if you're not making time for the most important thing you can do in life, there's a problem. <laughs> it's true. I mean, you're not wrong. Look, I, I totally with you, John. A cha I know we do a chapter or two, sometimes three a day. Gosh, sometimes we do like 20 one time, one or two times. But look, a chapter a day is a great, a great formula. Mm. Not a verse a day. Forget all that. Yeah. A chapter a day, right? Amen to that. And I, I think mean, you're right, Brian. Even the biggest chapter in the Bible, if you thought about it, read it slowly and took your time. What is that? 15 minutes? It, yeah, that's the at the most. 20? Yeah, the reason it takes us long is because we talk about all the little paragraphs and all the messages that that are in each chapter. But you don't have to do that by yourself. You read it. Gosh, you're talking three minutes to 15 minutes at most. Every day. Amen. And look, it'll do something to you. The Bible says, Joshua chapter 1, if you put the word of God before your eyes every day, all the time. It's even better to do it every day a lot during the day. It says that you will be prosperous and you will make good decisions and you will know which way to go. Mm. Well, you know, I, I need the I need the I need the wisdom of God right this second. Well, good. 
get in the Bible, read that chapter, go to Proverbs, read the New Testament, go read Genesis every day. It's yeah. like this. It's like this. It's like a giant bucket that's filling up with water. It's got a lot of holes in it. And as you read the Bible and study the word of God and you cultivate that relationship, you begin to plug those holes. And as you plug all the holes, one day, John, that water doesn't just run out the bottom of the bucket. It begins to fill up, fill up, fill up. And then all the holes are plugged. And guess what? It runs over the top. Psalms 23, your cup begins to run over and then he's with you and he has a table before you in the presence of your enemies and when all hell is around you breaking loose guess what you're at peace you're a joy you're joyful yeah well james mcdermott's doing it right you know he listens to our study you know he goes to church um but he also does his own lap yeah cover to cover study where he's on lap two right now on his own and he just Reads the Bible, and when he's done, he starts over, and he'll be on lap three, and there you go. Probably by the the middle of the year. Never stop, James. And he's just gonna keep going and going and going and going. Um, and if you want to challenge yourself, you know, we did the math. If you read three chapters a day, sometimes four, I think, um, you can read the Bible in a year. That's kind of cool. Man. Amen. Well, in one year. Nothing wrong with that. Every do it, like, mm-hmm. uh, Stuart Young. This is our devotional. Come on now, yeah, that's Amen. right. This is we're basically doing a devotional just in a long format, longer format. Well, let's continue. Yeah, twenty five. I'm going to want to go for it. Yeah, get it. Amen. For now, great crowds co- accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, "If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father, and mother, and wife," and children, and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Wow, it's a powerful statement here. Mm. Yes. You know, he's basically saying, I'm first. God is first. The word is first. Of course, love your parents, your sisters, your brothers, your neighbor. But love me. Like, you, John, literally what you just said is was a precursor to this message, right? The Bible comes. Remember you said this. It comes from, everything comes from the Bible. Everything comes from reading the word. And that's exactly what Jesus is saying here, verse 26. Amazing. Well, look at the end there too. And even his own life. Even his own life. So it's, it's not just other people or family. It's it's yourself as well. Uh, can we pull back the... Let's go Greek on this. Mm-hmm. Sure. And then also, yeah, let's go Greek and then also see what King James says. Yeah, the King James is right here. It says, uh, if any man comes to me and, and hate not his own father, mother, wife, children, brothers, sisters, yeah, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. Now, of course, he's giving you this big example about hate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And of course, he doesn't say hate like I hate you, but he's just saying, "Look, you gotta. You almost have to act like you have to. You hate your own life. Mm-hmm. That's what he's saying. You, you know, love you, me so much. Hate the world, hate flesh. Yeah. 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 Yourself, everyone around you. You know. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you know, love your neighbor. Yeah. Exactly. What's the what's the Greek on that? It's, it's here. Let's see. The Greek here is uh, if anyone comes to me, and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children, it's the same and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. Disciple. It's the same, word for word. So it's a good translation, I think. But like I said, it's it's he's not telling us to go hate everybody, obviously. But he's giving us this contrast that a, cor- a looking we we gotta love and honor Jesus mm-hmm. way more than we love and honor ourselves, our brothers, our mothers, our fathers, and our own life. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. 
It's that big of a deal. Because when you love him, full, if you love your own life, John, more than you love God, mm-hmm. you're, you, you're lost. You're lost. If you love yourself, if you love your mom more than you love Jesus, guess what? You're lost. If you love your kids more than you love God, you're lost. Well, how do you say that? I got to love my kids. Yeah, you do. But you got to love God. Yeah. You got to put him first. Oh, amen. That's what he's saying here. I'm excited to read the rest here. 27, you got it. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish. All who see it begin to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and deliberate, whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Mm. Interesting. Jesus is talking about war and like strategy. Mm. And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. Mm. 33. So therefore, if anyone of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Look at the cost. This is the cost of knowing the Lord, John. Yeah. Does now did he say you can't you have to stop weightlifting? No. Does he say stop playing music? No. Stop work? No. Right? He says renounce it as your of your source. Make God your source. Renounce it as your number one love. Make God your number one love. Mm. Of course he gave you the the, the gift of, of athletics, weightlifting, running, you know, javelin, hunting, you know, ba- basketball, whatever it is. But make God your number one source. Renounce that as your, this is who I am. I am a basketball player. No, no, no. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God first. Mm. Yeah, you want to slam dunk the last one? Oh, let me see here. Yeah. Absolutely. 34. 34 and 35. Perfect. Here we go. Salt is good. But if salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltliness be restored? Mm. It is of no use either for the soil or the manure pile. It is thrown away. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Ooh. I just ate that. The truth. Yeah, look at it. It said, it said, look, don't lose your influence, you know? He's like, you get, you're the salt of the world. Come on. Don't get weak. Don't get lukewarm. Oh, amen, Brian, to that. Don't get lukewarm. And, and we were just talking about that. It's like, make time to hear. Make time to read the word so then you can go preach the word. Come on. I'll never forget, like... You know, the guy with the big Psalms tattoo on his arm at AT and T. I think about this all the time. And I'm not judging this guy. Hopefully he comes around and all that, but I think about him. Because I'll never forget sitting there. This was yeah. just six, seven months ago. And I looked at him, I go, Oh, I love your tattoo, man. God is good. I go, What's that what does that verse? What's that verse say? And he just looked at me stuttering, backpedaling, and like in full panic mode. He's like, I don't know. I was like, you don't, you don't know. I, 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 I was, I was utterly shocked. I think I stuttered. I'm like, what the, you. yeah. I was like, I just can't remember. It's been so long. Oh yeah, that's right. But that is one of the saddest things <laughs> I've ever heard in my entire life. It, you, we can let that happen. That is the example of, that is the definition of lukewarm. That's beyond lukewarm. Yeah. At that point, your water is cold with ice on it. I know. And I looked it up, of course. I go, well, let's get Google out. Let's look it up. Let's look at the giant tattoo on your arm. Let's go. 
That a boy. And yeah. Up and it was a great verse. And he's like, oh, yeah, I got that in college. You're right. And then he kind of smiled and said, hey, come on, baby. Know the, know the tattoo on your arm. Know the word. Read, study. Look at this. If you have ears to hear, let him hear. Yeah, start over. That's okay. Learn it again. That's a true story, by the way. Ask my wife. I'm not exaggerating. That is a true. Yeah, I remember. I'm your witness. I remember you telling this to us on the men's group. Look, he, literally, the guy's salt has lost its flavor. Mm. He lost the taste. You know, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entered in and choked the word of God in his life. That's what Jesus says. That's those three things that happen. The cares of the world, you know, the, the money, bills, women, you know, the, or men or stuff, cars, you know, the deceitfulness of riches. You know, when someone asks me about one of my, what, one of my tattoos on my arm, because now I have quite a bit. Yeah. I kind of stand out a little bit. I always like to just close my eyes and be like, before I answer it quickly, oh, I mean, it says this, I like to be like, ah, the, the, the feeling of it. What's the feeling of the verse? What's the imagery? What's the movie clip? Oh, you know, what's the story? Yeah, that's, I like it, John. Oh, I that could tell you sound like Jesus telling us a parable, telling us a story. Yeah, it's like I could tell you the Bible verse, but do you have ten minutes so I can tell you the whole story around it? I like that. Yeah. You know? Oh no, I don't have ten. I gotta go. This what's it mean, real quick? Oh, okay. Well, it says this, but let me tell you all about it. Oh yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's you know. Now, like I told you, I well, a couple days ago. You know, if anybody says, "Man, I like your like your tattoo," like I have one too, right on my left arm, Genesis chapter one, verse one. Mm. I like to say, I like to say right off the bat, "Oh, you, this is the title deed of the world." Yeah. Oh, great. You know what? What is it? What do you mean? Oh, yeah. In mm. the beginning, God, the Creator of all, created the heavens and the earth, and you, by the way. Ah, oh, that's so great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Same thing with you, man. You have you have stories, you know. It, it's the tough. The toughest one to answer is my Nehemiah eight. Oh, uh, <laughs> celebrate, baby! Celebrate for days. It's a whole feeling. I love that. You read Nehemiah eight today, you'll understand that it's just like this imagery, feeling. That it's a time machine. It just takes you. You're there. It's not a verse tat the whole chapter i think that i know that i'm kind of using myself as an example of tattoos but let's take all that to the side every verse should be that to everybody yeah you know if you have ears to hear let him hear take it in take it in take your time let's end the podcast like this brian like you said in the very beginning or i should say what yahweh said meditate yeah over my word meditate yeah, think about it over and over again. Look at it. Read it again. What does it do to you? What does it mean to you? How can you change? How can you live it? Meditate. Joshua chapter 1. Oh, look at Stuart Young's doing. Yeah. A year said, Bible plan, like we the recap or something. I'm reading one cover to cover. Wow, Stuart, you still there on the chat? I know you're probably getting ready for work and all and getting the kids ready. If you're still there, is that uh, in order like we're doing, or is uh, is that move around a little bit? That's interesting, cover to cover. So he, if he's doing it in a year, though, he must be putting in some pretty big work because that's three to four chapters a day. The Bible app has a Bible in a year plan. Yep. Yeah, the, re the similar to the recap that we're doing, or we were, mm -hmm. and we talked about as a men's group, we talked about re starting another one. But yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, look. Yes. Yes, it's going sir. Over. Interesting. I didn't even know they had that. They have one that's... uh, It's cool. They have a chronological one. Have you, seen, have you heard of that? You know what? I have. It's like how the Bible was written in time frame. I had Brenda do it. That's right. 
I really just am not a huge fan. Well, I mean, what about the one that's uh, in reverse order? Yeah, I mentioned that. That's yeah. a crazy. That's a crazy <laughs> idea. That's not a maybe. Why not? Right? Yeah, that's I, uh, not, not why not. The chronological threw me off a little bit. I, I think. Yeah. God wrote, organized the Bible perfectly the way it's written and organized. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. She was reading it and then she was, um, well, the chronological bounces stories though. Yeah. It because does. of the time written and I, it just, let me make it very clear. I'm not saying that God's word is confusing, but the way the chronological is, is I had difficulties with it. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, it was that's... a little. It, it moved around a lot into different stories and books, and uh, I like the method that we're doing. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And if you're doing the chronological, and you're loving it, okay. But I, I you know, yeah, it's, different. It's, it's still got. There's no wrong way to read the Bible. I agree with that. I mean, that's a good point. There's not really like. You're yeah. reading the Bible. Go go read it. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no like, oh, you're doing that wrong. You know, that's like me when I ask my question: Who's your second favorite Bible character, and what's your favorite Bible or what's your favorite book? Now, obviously, when I say second favorite, I mean Jesus is the first. That's right. obviously the answer for everybody. But that's like someone answering me and being like, and then me being like, oh, that's wrong. It's like there's no wrong answer to my question. Right. Every answer is the best answer. I don't care who you say. Now, if you say like the the, the bad lady who got eaten by dogs, I Ju might kind of Judas. I might kind of look at you funny, but then again, that person could say because I learned how not to be. That's and true. A story attached to it and how it changed their life and they got saved because of it and it led them to Jesus and like that's the thing. You could even name the worst person in the Bible as your favorite person because somehow it brought you closer to Jesus. Uh, that's exactly right. It's it's in the word, you know. Even Jezebel, the old oh. wicked witch of the West. Who I was meaning, yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, she. There's a lesson in her life, you know. Don't challenge God like that. You know, I, I picture somebody up in heaven with a person with that if that had that answer, and like this um, bird, black bird was in heaven that was from that came from hell, yeah, and that was going back to hell, and that person just looks at that, at that bird and says, "Hey, bird, you go tell Jezebel in hell I say thank you." <sighs> what a powerful moment! And that bird's like, "Why?" Well. Because my story is that she brought me to Jesus. I mean, that's pretty good. In some odd way, you know, some some of their life story or something. And then that bird goes down back to hell and says, hey, this guy up in heaven said thank you. And then she goes, gosh, I wish I would have accepted God and been a godly woman. I hate being here. You bring up a great point. <laughs> you bring up a great point. That's right. That's right. That's Sorry. why the look, John. Yeah, that's I, why those. I, that's why those stories. That's why those people. That's why God shines a light on some people's lives. Mm. To just exactly what you said. To warn us. To teach us. That we don't stray from righteousness. Mm. You're right, man. Look, yeah. you're right. Glory to God, huh? What a day! What a good! What a good! Uh, what a good study. What a good devotion. <laughs> Amen. You know, that's Amen. right. I tell you, I am not going. I, look, I I kind of want to look a little bit more into that. Um, uh, verse 26. Oh, let's look. Well, I'm not, I'm not saying that we can't do it, but um, I'm going to go, uh, which is not too long ago, by the way, but I'm going to go to Pastor Brett on YouTube and hear what he has to say with this verse yeah if anyone to, hate, hates their you got to hate your life yeah i just want to see what he says and and then uh just kind of study this verse a little bit you know yeah absolutely 
Yeah, I think so. I think. Look, it's a good question. You know, it's a good question. This is not an easy thought. You know. I wonder if we can go like this, Pastor. I'll go. Yeah, don't forget we're we're instructed, John, by Jesus, and Paul, and the Word to love our brothers, to love our family, to love everybody. Ton already. Um, this is just what they're hoping he'll do. Oh man, I hope he heals the guy with the drops. He will have more evidence <laughs> against him than he did. Right, let's go work. fast forward. Here's there he is. Luke 14. There were great multitudes with them. Uh, in other words, all those people couldn't hang out in the house, but they're there with him. And he turned and said unto them. So now he turns to the multitudes that are go, gathered right? everywhere else. Here we go. He says, if any man come, at, uh, come to me and hate not his father and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Okay, Brett, this is where the Bible starts really giving me heartburn. Jesus said, unless you hate your father, your mother, your children, your brothers, your sister, or even your own life, you cannot be his disciple. Um, uh, what's Jesus saying here? Now, by the way, if you come across the scripture that seems to contradict another scripture, um, and by the way, this is where the secularists, the atheists, they love scriptures like this. What does the Bible do? You're supposed to love your brother or you're supposed to hate your brother because the Bible tells you both. And people love to make big deals out of this. Um, what does the Bible say about hatred? Uh, you know, 1 John 3, 15, whosoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer will have eternal life abiding in him. So the Bible obviously condemns hating your brother. Um, we're, told, we're told over and over, love one another. You'll know my disciples by your love one for another. So what's going on here? This is Jesus using a rhetorical technique um, that's strong comparative. A language that is to say basically your relationship with God should be so secure um, that in comparison, it's almost as if you hate your family. That's Jesus saying, you can't be my disciple if other affections mm -hmm. have priority over your affection for me. That's what you were saying, Brian. Yeah, it's the same thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in Matthew, he says something like, if you don't love me more than yourself, your brother, your family, your mother, you're not worthy of me. So it's the same kind of thing you're it looks like you hate your family because you love God so much, you know. Wow. Yeah, Brett said it great. Let's go a little. Yeah, you got another minute? I got another minute. Yeah. Jesus is doing what he's done in previous verses and chapters talking about you need to count the cost. If you're going to truly claim to be a disciple of mine, you got to count the cost. It's the same language you read in previous chapters. Verse 27, whosoever doth not bear his cross, remember, take up your cross daily and follow me, um, cannot be my disciple. Now, by the way, this is not talking about salvation. Um, sometimes I think we get confused. What's the difference between a disciple and a person who's saved? Well, uh, a, a person who's saved is like, would you call the thief on the cross a disciple? No. No, he really wasn't discipled at all. He didn't follow Jesus. He was nailed to a cross like Jesus, but he was saved. Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. There are people, I think, that are going to be saved. We'll see them in heaven. But were they really disciples, truly followers of Jesus? Mm. The reason I point that out is you have to be careful not to just assume that a, a person who's saved is a disciple. Jesus is saying, if you're going to be a disciple, you've got to count the cost mm. uh, and bear the cross. Um, by the way, uh, we did a teaching recently called, What Does It Mean to Bear Your Cross? We, we, we looked at that a few weeks ago. Misunderstood sometimes. Um, and, and reminder, you're not bearing your cross when you have a rough day at work. That's not you bearing your cross. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, the, he's telling them to count the costs before following Jesus. Um, and, and then he's going to give us some interesting sort of examples of verse 28. For which of you intending to... Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, too. He's saying disciples, too. Yeah, remember, this, it's, it's different than... Uh, I love that, that the contrast. There are people who are born again, but aren't really a disciple of Jesus. Mm. They go to church on Sunday for 10 minutes and they go home. That's it. Mm -hmm. They don't think about much. You know, they don't wait. They don't study the word of God every day. They don't have a good relationship. They don't talk to the Lord. No, they run to him in problems. 
Yeah. Oh. But a, a disciple emulates, re- copies, yeah. does exactly what the, the master does. And so that's what he's saying. If you really want to be my disciple, man, you got you to gotta love me so much. You got to do what I do so much. It looks like you're abandoning your family. You're hating your family. You're hating yourself, but you love God. So it's a great, it's a great message. Brett, I love, I love that man. No, oh, yeah, Amen. He's yeah. great. Very good, very good. Well, there we are. Holy Amen. It's gets Luke fourteen uh, in in the journey, and now tomorrow morning we'll do Luke fifteen. Which Luke fifteen is not that big, so we could probably go Luke fifteen six. Wow, there's a lot of red ink on my Bible here. Yeah, baby.